Hello and welcome to this OpenStreetMap video. I'm Philip Ellis and today we'll be taking you through a specific task that I've been doing across Melbourne recently. Uh, this is a bit of a follow-on from the MapTime Melbourne event that we've just held in October, which was on mapping the outer suburbs of cities and I guess large towns around Victoria. The main reason for this is there's some updated satellite imagery which has made it easier for people who aren't there especially with the five kilometer radius restrictions at the moment, that um, it makes it easier for us to actually map it without having to physically be there. So we've got the map centered on Melbourne at the moment. So let's just zoom out and find somewhere that's recently been built. So for those who may not be that familiar with Melbourne, there's basically five main growth corridors. There's this growth corridor down here near Werribee where the uh, suburbs are growing towards the southwest. There's the other growth corridor that extending out towards Melton at the west uh, towards Bacchus Marsh. There's a northwest growth corridor heading out towards Sunbury past Melbourne Airport. There's a northern one heading up towards Craigieburn, Wallert, Epping, that sort of area. And finally there's the southeast growth corridor down near Pakenham and Cranbourne, uh, which is almost connected up Pakenham by the look of it. So you can pick any of these areas really because that's where most of the growth is happening. There are some other bits and pieces around other suburbs where there's been new suburbs, but these are the areas where you're likely to find something new. So let's pick Pakenham and Officer. And you can see I've done some of the mapping around here already around these estates, um, some of which have been built, but a lot of this area is currently dirt basically being built for new residential development. So let's pop in here and see if we can find something to look at. So a good a good time, a, a good place to pick basically is an area between these individual estates because often they will already be under construction or have been sold off for development. So it's worth checking to see if there's anything happening there. You can also check some under construction areas like this one here, the Minta, Minta, Minta estate. So these dashed lines here mean that a road is closed or under construction and this uh, kind of darkish gray brown area uh, generally refers to a brownfield site or a site that's under construction. And you can see the difference versus a uh, built up residential area over here, the lighter gray versus this under construction area on the other side of Soldiers Road. So let's pop back in over here into what looks like a gap I actually have no idea if this is an area or not. I haven't haven't checked at it. Uh, let's get rid of those changes. So from the default satellite imagery, which is Bing, it looks like this is still farmland or it's been built up as some, some houses already. But we can check with all the satellite imagery here. If you go to the right hand side and select your background settings uh, tab under here on the right hand side, you've got all these options of different satellite imagery. So as you can see, it's currently on Bing is the default setting, but we also have Esri imagery, which looks pretty much the same. Esri clarity, I've literally never seen a difference between the two. Oh, this is the first time I've seen a difference between the two. But sometimes this gives you a more uh, high, higher quality satellite image, um, which allows you to zoom in further. Uh, there's no difference there. Mapbox satellite can be helpful. Maxar premium imagery is often actually the most up-to-date for Melbourne, I've found. Um, you've got Maxar Premium and Maxar Standard, then you've got OpenStreetMap and Starman and some other ones down here that you don't really need. If you do have your own satellite imagery, you can let it in via the custom button here, but obviously as always, make sure that you have the necessary permissions to do that. But um, for now, let's just stick with the, the ones that are already preloaded in. So it looks like this area probably wasn't a good place to start. So uh, let's pop off somewhere else. Uh, let's go down to this under construction area down here. So this is a good example here, right? So you can see on the big imagery, this is all farmland. However, someone has mapped in here the roads that are either completely finished or under construction. And you can see if we click on this area here, this tells us that it's a construction area called Minta Estates and looks like Stockland is developing this one. And these roads here as the orange and red dashed lines are construction. Um, yeah, construction equals residential or highway equals construction. And these ones over here, these residential roads are uh, already built. 
So obviously Bing isn't the most up-to-date uh, satellite image to be using at the moment. So let's see if any of the others can shed some light on this. Nope, Esri's still farmland. Esri Clarity is still farmland. Mapbox is still farmland. Maxar Premium, as I said before, has the most up-to-date imagery for this area. So you can see here this whole, these lots being subdivided, some fences. Um, if we turn on wireframe by hitting the W key, uh, that gives us a better view of the actual satellite image. And you can see these tags look pretty up to date. Um, all these roads look like they're under construction. However, as you can see, if we turn on wireframe again, there are some roads here that are actually built. So if you do get a scenario where, you know, half the road is built here, for example, where, you know, it's built up to here, we can double click on the line and that creates a new node. And if you select that node and hit X, or you can either right click and go to split, then that has now split the line into two different pieces. So we've got this line on this side, which is under construction, and this line on this side, which looks finished. So you can go around fiddling with these tags um, to change, to update the tags to a residential, highway equals residential, but the easiest way I find is just to click on the button at the top, type residential road into the search function and just click on that and that'll switch all the tags around. Um, the only thing to left to do is to remove the construction residential tag and you're good to go. So you'll see now we've got these two different pieces. Unfortunately, I don't, because it's a construction site, I'm guessing that there's no street view imagery. But let's have a look anyway. So if we go to the map data tab on the right hand side and click on the photo overlays menu, we can have a look to see if there's any mapillary imagery or open street cam imagery. These are both, if you're unfamiliar with them, these are both photo overlays which are taken at street level. So like Google Street View, but open source and available to use in OpenStreetMap. Looks like nothing's loaded in. Sometimes it takes uh, 20 seconds or so to load in the dots, but looks like there's nothing here. So let's turn them off and get rid of that menu. So yeah, this, this road is, is unnamed um, for now, but I guess once this estate is finished, um, it might be worth someone popping in to check to see if to see what the road's names, road name is. Another way you can look at it is via the Vic map, Victorian government data, but uh, we might cover that in a separate video. So that's one of the more common things that you can find on the outer suburbs is basically keeping these estate developments up to date um, as the construction develops and you get more up to date satellite imagery. Or if you're lucky and you happen to live in the area, you can, I guess, pop out and have a look for yourself. One of the other common tasks is mapping paths and parks. Often the roads are quite well mapped because these come up in the Vic map data and they can be mapped fairly easily, but paths do not. And you can see in this estate, if we, we can stick to this estate, there are two paths here that are connecting this road, Romeo Avenue to this road, which is unnamed as yet. And this is pretty important because as you can see, you know, if you're a person walking and you look at this map without the satellite image, obviously, you might think you have to walk all the way around Soho Boulevard, come down here and then walk all the way back down here in order to access your house. But there is actually a path there. So let's go ahead and map these paths. So if you click on line or hit two, click there, left click here. And we've now drawn a line um, connecting the two. So by the width of this path, it looks like a footpath. So let's go footpath. And that's now tagged it as highway equals footway. We've got this other path down here. So let's click there. Um, let's maybe map this down a little bit further and just end it there. And we'll do the same thing. I can't tell what surface it is. I'm guessing they haven't built an unmade path, but I'm not sure. So we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that for now. But now we've kind of connected these two together. So now when we save this, the OpenStreetMap Directions API, when you type in I want to go from X location to Y location, will know that there is a connection by foot between these two roads instead of you having to walk all the way around the outside. So that's that's also very useful. Something else that um, is also common in these estates are shared paths or bicycle paths. These are often requirements in these um, development plans. So 
the easiest way to spot them is to check the width of the path. So if we turn on wireframe again and zoom in a little bit, you can see here that this path here next to the road is quite a bit wider than the two paths that we've just mapped over here. That's usually the case because the minimum standard for shared paths in Victoria is three meters or 2.5 meters at an absolute minimum. And in these new estates, that can be three, three and a half, or sometimes even four meters. So that's how you can kind of tell, or it's first hint that it might be a shared path. In this case, the other giveaway um, is if you go over here, you can see there's this faint green paint that's been that's going over this road here. And again, that's a design standard or design guideline in a lot of these new estates that when a shared path crosses a road, you have to paint this green um, surface to warn other road users that there may be people walking or riding, crossing the road. And you can see again that this, this is a wide path. So I think from all that information that we can safely assume that these are, these are shared paths. So let's go, ahead and, let's go ahead and map them in. So it looks like it ends, the shared path ends, if we turn on wireframe again, the shared path kind of ends here into this new estate, although it looks like that this path here might be wide enough for a shared path, but I can't, I'm not 100% sure of that. So that might need a field survey. So let's just end it here at the, at the road, which also looks like it needs an update because apparently that is unpaved, but it is demonstrably not. Anyway, let's do the shared path first. So let's left click there with the line tool and let's trace this path. Make sure that we have path intersections and don't just go straight over them and click on them. Let's keep going up here. Again, clicking on the road. Let's follow this. All right, so the path looks like it's ended here. One day it may continue north, but for now it's uh, it's all it's all it's got. So let's type one of the new tools, one of the new tags actually in the ID editor is shared path, which is very handy um, because that, unlike cycleway, tags it as foot designated and bicycle designated. Whereas if you tag this as a cycleway, it will only tag it as bicycle designated and it will just leave the foot path uh, tag unknown to be filled in later. So this is a handy little tool that'll save you time. And now I've got this blue dashed line, which shows it as a shared path. Um, it looks like uh, that's paved concrete uh, by the color. So let's go ahead and go surface and then select concrete. And we can do the same thing for this very short section of a shared path by the look of it. And let's end it there and tag that as concrete too. If you know the width, it's handy to put the width in. Um, I'm guessing it's three meters, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna leave that blank. Um, if the path was under construction, you can also tag a path as under construction, similar to a road, which is pretty cool. But as it's not there, um, we'll just uh, leave it. So that's another cool thing and useful thing you can do in these new estates. Um, another thing, as we noted before, is that you know often there are roads that are existing, but they change over time as they get widened or the intersections get changed. Looks like this roundabout's been here for a while and we could um, split these traffic islands as well, but uh, we might leave that one for now. The most obvious thing here is that the, if we click on Soldiers Road, it shows the surface as unpaved here, which is obviously not true as we can see from this updated satellite imagery that it has since been resurfaced. So if we can go back in time and find a time when it was unpaved. Yeah, so here we go. So if we go to, it looks unpaved. Yeah, if we go to Bing, no, that's also Asheville. Okay, so this hasn't been updated in a very long time. Nevertheless, let's see how far this unpaved surface goes. Okay, so it goes up to here. You can tell, by the way, by this this kind of outline, this had dashed outline of the road um, that it's unpaved versus this section here, which is not tagged at all, but the default is paved for an urban road. So let's click on the road. Um, and that looks like Asheville because it's black. There, let's go surface and select asphalt and you'll see now that the outline has turned to a solid black line instead of a dashed one. Looks like that's fixed it all the way down here. Let's do the same for this roundabout and the same for this other section of road. It's worth checking the whole length of the road because sometimes it can get paved only up to a certain point and you may need to resume the unpaved section but nope it looks like this is all 
or paved. Great. So there are a couple of things that you can do mapping in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. As I said, we've recently run a mapathon on this and this is just designed to give you some extra information and some extra tools and things to go out and look for. There are heaps of things to do even in established cities like Melbourne. So get out there and check the updated satellite imagery. Once we can walk around again, um, feel free to go out on your own field trips and map your own data. That's the best way to collect information is to just physically go out there and see what you can see. But um, failing that, satellite imagery is also a great way to, to find out what's going on as well as any street side imagery like uh, mapillary or open street cam that may be available. Also, please feel free to come along to some of our Map Time Melbourne events. We try and hold them about once a month. Obviously the pandemic screwed that up a little bit, but um, we're trying our best to get them up and running. So if you are interested, feel free to come along and uh, there's lots of other experienced mappers there to help you and help answer your questions. Thank you and uh, happy mapping.